Hi everyone. If you are here for the first time, then let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Harshita Chaudhary, secured a rank of 188 in NEET PG 2023 and a rank of 184 in INI May session 2023. With two months left for the November INI, if you are still struggling with making notes, which are concise and revisable in the last few days, then you are definitely at the right place. In this video, I will be combining different subjects and putting it together in just few pages, so that it can be easily revised in the last ten days. One topic today which I have picked up is a continuation of the series I was doing on parasitology, and I have already done platy helminths and nematodes, which you can find in my videos on my channel Concise with Chaudhary. Now I'll, I will be delving into protozoa. I assure you, from this video, you will not be only learning protozoa, but also the interrelated topics of gynecology, derma, uh, you know. even ophthalmology etc and this will surely yield at least 2 to 3 questions in the upcoming ini session so starting with protozoology without wasting a lot of time is i have divided protozoan according to systems so the uh, the protozoas affecting particular systems have been grouped together this is like the order that is given in first aid but i have combined here with a lot of subjects so you can just read these notes and you will be done with this topic along with other interrelated topics so i divided parasites into two as you can see protozoa and helminths and helminths into platy and nematodes now i will be dealing with protozoa like this so starting with git in git the first two organisms that we need to know and differentiate is giardia lambia and entamoeba histolytica so first most important is that giardia causes non bloody diarrhea which is not caused due to invasion but due to duodenal villus atrophy whereas entamoeba causes bloody diarrhea and that is due to invasion after invading it causes a histopathological image which is popularly known as the flask shaped ulcer and this is again ini ct pyq Again, the infective form is a quadrinucleate cyst in both. The treatment is metronidazole for both. Apart from that, for entamoeba histolytica, you need to add luminal agents as first entamoeba affects the intestine and then invades and goes into the uh, liver and causes a very famous disease, which is known as your uh, amoebic liver abscess. And this liver abscess has a very famous uh discharge or the color of the sauce which is known as the ancovi pus sauce it's a brown colored liquid and hence you can see this so this is a surgery topic do read this from surgeon that's how you will combine different subjects so add luminal agents most common being peromomycin and hydroquinol and uh, remember that you need to know the images for these two sometimes the egg of giardia is also asked which is here this is again an inict pyq question and you have something which is known as the thread test for diagnosing giardiasis this is a very important image you can see this form of giardia and the motility of giardia is commonly known as the falling leaf motility you see this two nuclei and this is known as the grand old man appearance so remember these two nuclei when seen along with this uh, several flagella you need you know it's we are talking about giardia and the motility is falling leaf motility now you need to differentiate this with an organism which is again commonly found which is this here you will see that you can see only one prominence here and you will also read the clinical features this is trichomonas and it causes a vaginal discharge which i will be discussing ahead at the end of my video so stay tuned for the video now after discussing amoeba i will uh, get the more common features and the interrelated topics together so here you can see the uh, common thing which can be confused is along with amoebic dysentery you need to know ciliary dysentery so what is ciliary dysentery basically amoeba moves by pseudopodia whereas ciliary dysentery is caused by an organism which has cilia this image is also asked i have only put the images in the video which are frequently asked so this is again inict pyq that ciliary dysentery is caused by an organism known as balentidium coli the reservoir is asked which is pig and the drug of choice is doxycycline which is a tetracycline along with this do read the free living amoeba as the questions are also asked there are two free living, uh, living amoeba niglaria and acanthamoeba this causes a cns disease which is known as primary amoebic encephalitis caused due to fresh water swimming the there's only one form that is trophozoites which 
comes to the humans by you inhale this uh, form and then it goes through your cribri from plate and to the brain so that's how this organism reaches the brain and the trophozoid is the diagnostic and infective form the drug of choice is amphotericin b now do also tell me amphotericin b is also the drug of choice for kala azar which is again a protozoa along with the fungi so everybody knows the fungi but up to other organisms for which amphotericin b is used is in the glarian kala azar Coming to acanthamoeba, acanthamoeba causes corneal ulcer typically in contact lens users who have unhygienic practices like washing the contact lenses with tap water. And the drug of choice is methyl biguanide. Uh, so its uh, short form is PHMB, which I have written here. Right. Now, coming on to the other protozoa which affects the GIT, I have cryptosporidium. So, cryptosporidium is a very, very frequently asked topic. If you need to know one thing from this entire PDF, I would say do not miss out on this topic which is diarrhea and HIV. Whenever you have a case of persistent diarrhea in HIV, the next step which is commonly asked is do the modified acid fast stain, right, which is known as the quinone staining. So, you would have three pictures which can come to you. First is the cryptosporidium, either the cyclospora or the cystoisospora. Bili. Remember, you will get the size in the clinical images. So, uh, do remember the size. The smallest is cryptosporidium. In the middle, cycling between two organisms, as I remember it, is cyclospora with 8 to 10 micron and cystoisospora, the longest name with the biggest size is 20 to 30 micron, right? Remember the images and the size is very important. Diagnostic form is sporulated oocyst, unsporulated for these. Autofluorescence, if to mark one answer, is seen in cyclospora. And very important is the drug of choice, nitrosoxanide for cryptosporidium and cotrimoxazole for cystoisospora bili. Now, a patient who has AIDS presenting with persistent diarrhea, you would do this. Also, can you tell me if you have a patient with AIDS, where would you use cotrimazole? You do use it for a very common infection in AIDS, that is pneumocystis pneumonia prophylaxis. So, if a patient is already on pneumocystis pneumonia prophylaxis, there is very less chance that they get these two organisms, cyclospora and cystoisospora bili. Coming on to the CNS infections is the first very important one that is Toxoplasma gondii. Again, you can have two clinical spectrums in this organism. First is can be a clinical stem with a patient of AIDS presenting with multiple ring enhancing lesion, the clinical feature of which will be seizures. Then uh, it can also present with chorioretinitis and this is an ophthalmology question that what is the appearance known as headlight and fog appearance, right? Coming on to the other clinical spectrum is congenital toxoplasmosis, which is a pediatrics frequently asked questions. You will have a triad of hydrocephalus, intracranial calcification, which will be diffuse along with chorioretinitis. So, when you see chorioretinitis here, when you do the fundoscopy of a patient of congenital toxoplasmosis, you will see a punched out scar that is present like this one. Now, very important to differentiate between the intracranial calcification in the congenital infections, you will also get another question of CMV. So, the biggest clue in CMV is CMV causes the periventricular that you will have the two lateral ventricles and along that if you see the uh, white white calcification on a CT, then it will be a CMV infection and a toxoplasmosis. So, very important, this question is very frequently asked, CMV V for ventricular, remember this. So, CMV is also the most common cause of uh, SNHL in children, right? So, remember that also, these two are questions asked from CMV, which you have to differentiate from toxoplasmosis. Now, for the pharma part to prevent the placental transfer, you have a drug which is known as pyramycin which is used. If tra placental transfer has already happened, then you again need to just do the treatment which is this. So, the treatment is sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine. Now, pyrimethamine is a, a folic acid inhibitor. So, you will have to give folic acid supplementation along with this, right? If you have a sulfur allergy, then you need to give clindamycin. All this is asked, this is the pharma. Coming on to the lab diagnosis. So, I usually take you serially so that it forms an image in your mind as well that a patient comes to you with the clinical features, then you will do the test. So, test, a very frequently asked question is the Sabin Fieldman test, which is very important. But a special test is IgG avidity test, which is usually used on toxoplasmosis, right? Now, you can also do the biopsy and see the... Uh, 
uh, infective form the uh, tachyzoids in the brain taking you roughly through the life cycle i'll only highlight the important parts not everything you need to know in each life cycle see so first and foremost you need to know the host so the definitive host is the cat right intermediate host is a rat and human is an accidental host remember human can only get this accidentally through four routes see i have marked the four routes first is trans transplacental either through blood transfusion through eating undercooked meat which is you ingest the tissue cyst and the fourth is either ingesting it through food and water contaminated with cat feces now a very important misconception which we find is even if you don't have cat exposure can you get toxoplasmosis the answer is yes because the most common mode of ingestion is through undercooked meat right if you have pig or the sheep meat which is undercooked you can ingest the tissue cyst so hence yes cat exposure gives you definitely a hint but it is not mandatory so third point is the most common mode of uh, ingestion of this organism also if you have words like tachyzoids remember tachyzoids or bradyzoids these refer to toxoplasmosis only so the whole life cycle is not important but you can identify by the host the cat and the rat along with that you need to know the mode of ingestion coming on to the visceral organism so till now what have we done we have done organism affecting the git we have done organism affecting the cns now i'm taking you to the visceral system visceral system means the blood and we cannot forget a very important organism that is kala azar the disease is known as kala azar the organism is leishmania donovani you will usually have a history of an endemic area like bihar and the patient will present with fever hepatosplenomegaly and pancytopenia as this organism infects the bone marrow now what you see in your hospitals commonly is the rapid test which is the rk39 right rk39 again frequently asked now when you do the bone marrow biopsy you will see something known as ld bodies which are basically macrophages with the amastigot form so there are two forms but you will see the amastigot form inside the humans right so another most frequently asked question here is kinetoplast what is kinetoplast it's a modification of mitochondria which was present in the amastigot so this is the image of ld bodies right which is basically a modified macrophage and as you can see this is the kinetoplast which is present in the amastigot form so this is important to know now what is donovan bodies do let me know in the comment section i will only answer after you guys try that differentiate between the ld bodies and the donovan bodies because this is very confusing you know you often forget this and forgettable topics like this is what i put in my last 10 days revision notes the vector for leishmania is sand fly i have also put a, a psm slide here which uh, has basically the image it is a psm question the, you have hair on the body of sand fly along with the other diseases which you need to know that is transmitted by sand fly the drug of choice as discussed above is amphotericin d earlier we did use sodium stibogluconate but because of resistance we shifted to amphotericin b miltefosin is the oral form oral drug which is used for leishmania okay now coming on to the next organism which is trypanosoma so trypanosoma has two species which is trypanosoma cruzi or trypanosoma brucei trypanosoma cruzi is the one which is uh, causing the visceral infection so you remember it by chagas disease and the clinical feature is remembered by everything is big big heart dcmp mega esophagus and mega colon the sign which is asked very frequently is the romana sign so as you can see this image there is unilateral periorbital swelling and when you see this in a patient you know that this is suspicious of chagas disease the vector is the redovid bug known as the kissing or the assassin bug is this is the exam uh, this is the image again and a word that is as is sterconian transmission so sterconian is basically through feces that this vector will uh, basically defecate on the body and on rubbing the skin the feces will get into the skin of the human and then cause the disease and xeno diagnosis is another word which is used for uh diagnosing this disease the drug of choice is benzimidazole right so do tell me where the drug of choice is benzimidazole i have already discussed this in my platyhelminths video so do see that right now 
Another is African sleeping sickness, which is caused by Trypanosoma brucei. So, Trypanosoma brucei, the clinical features will be fever, lymphadenopathy, somnolence. So, African sleeping sickness, remember somnolence, right? It is a CNS disease, African sleeping sickness. The two signs are winter bottom sign and Kurlander sign, and the vector is CC fly. Image again important. Right, now coming on to the STDs. So, STD, the STD which you need to know is a protozoan, trichomonas vaginalis. I have shown you the picture above. It is a combination of your OBGY and derma question. It will be asked. It's a DD of, that is a differential diagnosis of vaginal discharge, which is by the taken care by the green kit at the PHC. So, remember, do read about the kits here. When you are watching this video, pause this video, see the color kits, see what they are used for. I have already told you vaginal discharge is for green. What are the other kits? Read that, right? So, vaginal discharge, usually pathological vaginal discharge has three causes. I have given you the table. This is a very, very important table. I am not discussing it as it is very easy. You just need to know it and read it here itself so that you finish a very important question. Important is you need to know about the AMSL criteria and the Nugent score. These words are associated with bacterial vaginosis and also read the exact criteria. See the image that this is a clue cell which will be found on your... Uh, examination and as I've already told you this is the image of the trichomonas and you will hear see twitching motility so falling leaf motility giardia image is given twitching motility along with a history of green yellow green foul smelling discharge you will know it is trichomonas right also inflammation is present hence on per speculum examination you can see these punctate hemorrhages and this is known as the very famously strawberry cervix okay now, coming on to Candida, Candida, remember the pH is the most important differentiator as the no, uh, normal vaginal pH is usually found as it is basically an overgrowth of a commensal. So, you will find this white curdy discharge along with uh, whenever you take a colposcopic examination sample, you will see that there are budding hyphae. So, these pseudo hyphae are seen which is a diagnostic feature of Candida. Right. Now, tell me three STDs where a partner treatment is not needed. Right. So, you will not need partner treatment in something like herpes as it is a reactivation infection. You do not get it from your partner. Uh, the second is candida again as it is again a commensal overgrowth and the third is bacterial vaginosis. Okay. This is also a PYQ asked earlier in INICT. Also, remember trichomonas, it's not here. It is an STD. You would do need partner treatment. Okay. Now, another thing, coming on to the hemat part, hemat, we have a very important topic which is known as malaria. So, in malaria, you need to know the agent, you need to know the vector anopheles mosquito, which is the definitive host. The clinical features you are all are familiar with, high grade fever, chills and an endemic place like India. Now, coming on to the very important thing, which is the life cycle, you don't need to know, you should have a rough idea basically, but a direct question from the life cycle will be only asked in the areas where I have highlighted. So, the mosquito takes a blood meal and it injects the sporozoids. So, sporozoids is the infective form for the human. Now, uh, what are the important parts that whenever the uh, pathogen affects the RBCs, sometimes first of all, the human in the human, the liver stage is formed. That is the exoerythrocytic cycle. It di uh, directly doesn't go on to the RBC. You have the exoerythrocytic cycle which is present. So, it will infect the liver cells and it will form a schizont. Sometimes, whenever the schizont bursts and later infects the red RBCs, you might have some which are uh, latent, which is known as the hypnozoids. These are the dormant forms. This causes the relapse and it is this feature of hypnozoid formation is found in Vivax and Ovale. Now, you will not have a relapse if you give a drug which in uh, which is against the hypnozoids and that drug is Primaquine. PQ stands for Primaquine. I've used this ahead also, this mnemonic. Coming on to the erythrocytic cycle, now whenever the erythrocytes rupture, they will lead to symptoms. So, the fever spikes will come whenever you have erythrocyte rupture, okay. Now, whenever there is persistent infection due to incomplete treatment, you will have a word which is known as recrudescence. This is relapse here, this is recrudescence and recrudescence is a feature of plasmodium falciparum which causes a complicated malaria along with plasmodium malaria. 
the diagnosis here is important diagnosis is by a peripheral smear and you can have a thick smear which is used for diagnosis of the organism and a thin smear which is used for identification of the exact species so remember this now you will get the most frequently asked question which is very easy honestly speaking is the peripheral smear image as you can see here the banana shaped gametocytes are present and either you get this or you see the ring form now you see the ring form or the headphone form which is present known as the acole form this or both of these are present in plasmodium falciferum just a small thing here differentiate this with this image if you find this a maltese cross that is present you know you are talking about a disease which has clinical features similar to malaria but is not exactly malaria as maltese cross is present in a disease which is known as babesiosis this is a special ina special question only you will not find so much of these in neat but ina will ask you such weird organisms also at times so transmitted by heart tick there is no hepatic cycle heart tick image i have given you here i have written where all places also you can find the maltese cross appearance so in the urine of fabies fabries disease and in the capsular antigen ar arrangement in cryptococcus okay coming on to malaria only so either you can do, uh, diagnose it by a peripheral smear examination frequently done or by something which is known as a rapid test two rapid tests which you need to know is known names are ldh and hrp2 hrp2 is very specific for plasmodium falciparum the third test again is qbc that is the quantitative native buffy coat you usually centrifuge the wbcs and you add the acrid and orange dye which selectively stains the nucleic acid so uh, rbcs don't have a nucleic acid in them and hence you will see that if the nucleic acid is staining that is the nucleic acid of the pathogen that is plasmodium so that is the test coming on to the treatment which is very important asked in medicine pharma micro everywhere is I have divided it like this. This is extremely easy and simplified, and I would recommend that you learn it this way so that it goes into like your deepest form of memory, long-term memory. Is severe malaria or the complicated malaria, and the diagnostic criteria here. This is also asked once in the AIMS uh, paper, and the non-severe malaria, right? I don't want to repeat this entire thing because it's very self-explanatory. So I would like you to go through this. okay and i'll just highlight the important very very important parts is that here uh, act is the artemisin combined therapy which is a slow acting therapy and you usually combine it with primaquine why to prevent uh, what is known as the transmission right of the malaria okay and another very important point is that primaquine is contraindicated in all trimesters of pregnancy so treatment of pregnancy uh, with malaria is also very very frequently asked remember primaquine you will not give so as i've already told you know relapse will happen right if you have a pyvx infection and primaquine is contraindicated yes the patient will come after relapse but that is something that you need to compromise on because primaquine is not uh, absolutely contraindicated category d drug in pregnancy very important question effective in all stages except erythrocytic schizogony so exactly you cannot get what you call as the clinical cure but you will get definitely what you known as you will prevent the relapse you will prevent the transmission by using primaquine another thing which is asked here is the chemo prophylaxis and chemo prophylaxis again you need to know and as two headings the non pregnant and the pregnant women remember in a chloroquine sensitive area you will give chloroquine if a chloroquine resistant area is present which is majority of the places are chloroquine resistant now if you are going for a holiday so when you give chemo prophylaxis when you are going for a holiday to a malaria endemic state or a malaria endemic country right so that time the clinical stem will be such a tourist is coming to india for example if the holiday span is less than 6 weeks you will give a drug known as doxycycline on a daily basis if it is more than 6 weeks you will give mefloquine on a weekly basis in pregnancy you have intermittent prophylaxis now i have covered everything every possible subject malaria was present in and combined it here for you one thing that i need you to remember from psm part of malaria is this that is that remember the api the annual parasite index there is a table i will be adding this when i give you the pdf on my telegram channel so do subscribe to my telegram and my youtube channel for further updates and so know the api and the comparison between different mosquito like anopheles culex culex is very frequently asked 
and uh, you know ads mosquitoes so this is again a psm topic and i will add the images don't worry i will give you the table but it's a very uh, rut and remembering kind of thing so there's no point if i teach you this here there's absolutely no point i have just taught you here how to combine stuff and put in concise form third point is all the three kinds of surveillance for malaria is done so you have the active passive and the sentinel surveillance similar to hiv even for malaria these are two diseases where all three types of surveillance is done right so that's it i think i have combined all the important points or from all the important subjects for protozoa so do watch this video and like and subscribe if you like this video and other videos so thank you and happy studying